So on step two of the 15 steps for painting an ocean rocky coastline at sunset, <laughs> this one is about sketching in the shapes, sketching in actually the placement of those shapes throughout the composition. There are a few different ways that I do that for each of my paintings, depends on the painting. I'm gonna discuss the one that I do for this particular painting and then tell you a little bit about some of the other ways that I do that so that you can see why I use this method for this painting and why I use other methods for other paintings. So let's get to that right now. All right, so step two is when I sketch in the placement of some of the major compositional shapes. So this step isn't a necessity. It's something that, that I do only occasionally. In fact, I rarely do this. Generally speaking, I come in with big shapes of color and I'm just blocking in right off the bat the three to five major shapes that I see in my composition and creating those shapes immediately with the overall color that I see there. I'm not using lines. I'm just using big shapes of color for those three to five major compositional shapes. And then I refine those shapes more or less depending on what each particular painting suggests to me. Some paintings I wanna have more loose and some paintings I wanna have more detailed. It really depends on that particular painting. But in this case, I wanted to get a pretty good idea of where I wanted to place the different large shapes and objects in there so that I had a, a clear understanding of the placement for those things. I just thought it would help to speed things up, but I don't like lines overall or sketching in too much the different areas in a painting because then it almost holds me back a little bit. I almost feel like I'm doing the paint by numbers and I have to stay within those lines, kind of like a coloring book. And I don't want anything to inhibit my creative energy or just doing what I want to with it. But in this case, I think it was helpful to keep me on track. Now, in this initial sketch, I'm just using some alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue. It's just any dark color that works for you. And for me, the ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson mixture works well underneath a lot of other colors. I know that this isn't going to affect anything I put on top of it. And I have been concentrating on getting a pretty close approximation of where things go without being too worried about it. I don't wanna get uptight about it. So one of the reasons for this instead of just going in with the big shapes like I normally do, is that in a case like this, I like the way that the different cliffs are stepping back, and I like the size relationships of each of the elements in the painting. So I wanna maintain that relationship in there. And I have a tendency sometimes when I just start going for it and get over exuberant or enthusiastic about it to make some things bigger than they should be. And it feels much better if I'm at least close to the size or even smaller than the actual size that I'm seeing there. It just has a much better feeling to it than if I get too large with things. But you notice I'm not just drawing with a thin line each of these things right here. I'm actually using the edge sometimes of the brush, sometimes the flat of the brush. And when I use the flat of the brush, that is to help get some of those darker, big shadow areas in there. So. I'm not just getting the, the placement of shapes overall or the size relationships. I'm also getting some of those shadow areas in there right off the bat. I like to have my shadow areas in first, the darker areas in the painting, because I can easily build on top of those rather than starting with light areas and getting white mixed into things. It's a lot easier to layer light on top of dark than dark on top of light. Well, I hope that gave you some ideas about ways to lay in the painting and get those first shapes or uh, placements in there. And don't forget, if you want more information, go to the blog post that's all about these 15 steps. And you'll find also each one of these videos in that blog post. I'm going to be placing them in each of the steps. And don't forget about our free art training page with lots of free art training on there and the new art club page as well, where we have artists from all over the world coming in there to join in the Zoom room and to be part of that art community. These are just ways for us to share what we do with all of you. So have fun and happy painting.